I'm here at the lovely home of Richard Durrant, who's very kindly agreed to allow me here to discuss things around the ideas of posture, ergonomics and repetitive strain injuries for classical guitarists. So, Richard, thank you very much for this. An enormous pleasure. Have you heard of repetitive strain injuries? Yeah, very much so, yeah. I was aware of that when I went to music college. I had, um, for the first term at the Royal College of Music, I was having physiotherapy for... For, it wasn't for repetitive strain, but um, it was just for a lot of discomfort I was getting in my left hand. I had bad oh. technique. I was playing through <laughs> muscle power and brute force. I started in concerts when I was about 16, and I, I remember playing the Aranquith Concerto with the local youth orchestra, and it, it was quite painful. I got round it somehow, but I was, I was learning how to kind of form the basic shapes when I first went to the college. Charles Ramirez took me right back to basics, and I went and had some sort of treatment on my hand and it's been mm. all right ever since. Good. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that there were guitarists and pianists that suffered at the college as well, so, you know, it's not unheard of. It's not just sports people that get those kind of niggles. No, it's not. There, um, a, a survey discovered that people are more likely to have pain symptoms when they're starting music studies at university more than people doing sports. Right. Um, have you come up with an explanation for that? Bad teaching, perhaps? Very probably. I think, well, it's... Uh, bad teaching perhaps puts a certain emphasis on the teachers doing a bad job, mm -hmm. possibly deliberately, whereas really I'd say it's more to do with them simply not knowing anything about the human body and not even knowing that they should know things about the human body. That's where I think the problem might well be. Right. There's um, also a stigma about not talking about your injuries because some people aren't going to be hired. Your light is flashing. Have a flashing okay. light. <clears throat> some people, they, they worry that they won't get work if word gets out that they've had an injury because people might well, fear that they well, get a relapse suddenly and they cancel at the last minute. Right. Uh, what, you're referring to orchestral players? or Everything, yeah. Right. So what kind of attitude was there around injuries when you were studying? Um, attitude? Um, well, I, I know, I, I was aware of one girl at college that, that, that stopped playing altogether because she, she suffered quite badly from tendinitis. Um, that's the only example I can remember in any specific detail. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite baffled that, that you think there were people that would hide their injuries through fear of losing work. That's, mm. that's a strange concept. There is I one mean, study that got something like a 30% response rate, and through talking to various musicians, they, they decided that the most likely cause for most people not responding was because they were worried that even though it was an anonymous survey, right. word would have got out. How strange. Might be seen as unreliable. How strange. Because yeah. Somebody, um, I think it was the pianist Gary Grafman, who, whose career was threatened or possibly even... He ended up being a one-handed pianist wow. because of damage to one of his hands. Yeah. And he said that admitting that you've got a problem is like jumping, bleeding into piranha-filled waters. Nobody wants a wounded musician. There are plenty of wow. others who aren't. Goodness me. I suppose if you're a concert pianist, then uh, that, that might be a problem. You have to book a long way ahead, don't you? So, mm. if you if you're playing concerts, uh, which is my game as well, <coughs> um, I, I, I am aware that, that that there's a lack of understanding, I think, or, or evidently a lack of awareness about the, the the sort of physicality of playing the guitar, and also it's such a broad um, church that this instrument um, exists in that there are lots and lots of different ways of approaching it. You know, if you're a steel strung player, acoustic electric, classical, lots of people try and turn their hand to all sorts of styles. Mm. Um, so, but I, I, I think, I mean, for, for me, I think, I think there, there are some very um, simple and effective things that, that, that people need to be aware of. And I'm always surprised when, you know, when I see people playing in a, in a certain way. Mm. Um, you see it on ukulele a lot as well. I'm, I've just written a ukulele concerto and I'm quite heavily involved in, in coaching the, the audience uke players that take part in this big <laughs> orchestral piece. Um, and a lot of you players are they, they play in a very strange way. It doesn't matter so much on the uke, I suppose, because it's only four strings and and the notes are relatively straightforward compared to playing mm. the Aranquith, for example. They're not going to be doing quite as much. They're not going to be doing so much um, uh, dashing about up and down the fretboard. But ne nevertheless, the same things are true. You know, simple shapes, 
It's all about simple shapes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that keeps you out of trouble. It keeps me out of trouble. It keeps me, it's what I aim for when I practice. If I've got a, you know, a big concert tour coming up, then yeah. I just, I, go, I again go back to basics. Mm. It's rather lovely. It's quite quite a yogic thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to ask that last question again because it didn't get answered. <laughs> the attitudes towards injuries when you were studying, was it, if somebody was injured, did they try and keep it quiet? Or, no, well, no. perhaps you wouldn't know if they kept it quiet. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known. <laughs> no. the, only, the only instance I can think of is, is uh, a girl that was studying... Uh, a few years below me that actually gave up playing. As right. far as I'm aware, I think she stopped altogether because she was suffering from bad tendonitis. Mm. Um, that's the only... I, I, I don't have um, any knowledge about people's attitude to injury because it, it, it wasn't on my radar when I was at college. And it clearly I, wasn't a part of the educational syllabus. No, I mean, we, we, we all... Uh, the, the majority of... I, I was on the performance course at the Royal College. This is a long time ago. A long time ago, and I had problems that needed sorting out. And and the people that were studying performance as their main thing, um, that's what they did with most of their working hours during the week was was practicing their instrument. And I was aware that there were pianists that practiced six hours a day. Mm. I was never a six hour a day practicer. You know, four was max. Mm. And I I, th I think to this day that you know, as, as long as you go past three hours, that's the magic figure. If you get three hours practice done, then 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 you're going to maintain something and you know continue mm. your your uh, your learning trajectory. I um, believe that um, the violinist Nigel Kennedy. Yes. I think in his autobiography he says that he does four hours practice a day. Mm -hmm. I went through a neurotic practice phase trying to get ready for an audition, and I was doing about five or six hours a day. And I found that as I approached five hours, the further I, the closer I got to five hours, and the further I went beyond it, the more I felt I hadn't achieved anything. <laughs> so it made well, me want to practice even more. Well, no, no, that's that's crazy. That's crazy. Yes. I probably still haven't answered the question, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> this interview is definitely going to be a lot longer than I planned. <laughs> We're now into question two. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> what do you think are the most common causes of repetitive strain injuries? Um, bad posture, lack of knowledge, ignorance about what you're doing. Um, Ignorance, we're talking nice accusatory word. Well, it is. Yeah, I, 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 I don't mean it in an un, un, unpleasant way, but you know, you, you have to you have to really think about what you're doing and really understand what you're doing, and um, you have to be ready to get to take that information on board as well. You know, mm. you can be told something by loads of different people, but you have to be ready to hear it, mm. and to learn something very simple, like a simple approach with your left hand, because it is simple. All, all it is is hinging your arm up. The only strain you put on your hand when you play the guitar is to turn it that way. Mm. And it's only ever so slight, but that, that is a slight strain, and then you just hinge it up, and that's it. Fingers to the ceiling, no funny angles, no elbows or wrists. That's it's the just, problem, though. You give someone a guitar, simple. and they instantly and they go, do guitar. all these weird things. Yeah, I know, that exactly. Really exactly. Aren't natural. Yeah, the wrist comes up towards the face. Keep your, keep your wrist away from your face, and it's a curve. I find they normally keep it too far away. Well, they can do that they as well, yeah. Did I answer question two? Yes. <laughs> Who do you think is more at risk of developing a repetitive strain injury? An athlete, a musician, an office worker, or a cleaner? It depends on the individual, I would have thought. Some people are very, very aware of their physicality, aren't they? Some people aren't. Mm. So I, I would imagine it's even Stevens. But it's very intense what you do on, a, on an instrument. It's, mm. And it can feel very unnatural. I know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a frustrated cellist. I studied cello as well, and I'm not a good cellist. But I, I'm, I'm fascinated by the challenge of it. Mm. And I can see that the strain it's putting on different joints mm. is, is quite severe. But then, you know, so, so is playing rugby or yeah. tennis. And well, I've got a knee injury from playing golf at the moment, so... <laughs> <laughs> who, am I to, who am I to talk? I think, I think whatever, whatever you do, it, you owe it to yourself to try and, you know... Do a little bit of investigation. If, yeah. you, if, you, if you are getting paid to sit at a desk all day, you might want to think about standing at a desk all day, actually. It's mm. probably wiser. But, yeah, yeah st standing is... For me, standing is a, is a new discovery. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so you would say that it's more down to the individual and how they use their body rather than yes. their job? Yeah. Some, some people are more graceful, naturally. Mm. My wife is a dancer. She has a beautiful grace about the way she moves. 
Um, I remember my teacher... And she's probably learned most of that. She has learned that, but she's become very bodily aware. My daughter's the mm. same. She's studying dance. Um, she's very, very aware of her physicality. Mm. Um, whereas myself, as my teacher pointed out in my first year at college, I walk on stage like a gorilla, apparently. <laughs> looking like a gorilla. You look like a gorilla, Darren. You always will. Uh, but I'm, I've become aware of that as well, and I see it as a challenge to try and be a little bit more graceful <laughs> when I move around. And certainly now, having spent five or six years playing all my concerts standing up and recording standing up as well, I think I've got a little bit more awareness of of, of my body. I had terrible back problems, um, for, probably from years of moving musical equipment around, leaning into the backs of cars to lift out amplifiers, but probably also because... That's crazy, using a footstool. <laughs> it's mad, unnatural. Yes, it's a terrible thing to do to yourself. Yes, I agree. What do you think the chances are of developing an RSI as a musician? How likely do you think it is, what kind of percentage of musicians? Well, having, having seen the way most people play the guitar, and I I'm, I'm really don't want to be judgmental in, 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 in an unpleasant way about this, but a lot of people play the guitar in a very strange way. <laughs> a very strange way. Even people that teach play in a strange way. Um, so I would have thought it's extremely common. Extremely common. Or what happens is that the, mu the musician will get frustrated because they're not getting anywhere. They plateau at quite a low level and probably go and stick it in the loft and forget about it mm. and do something else. And that's really, really sad because the simplicity of playing is something to be enjoyed as well in the way that you can enjoy yoga or other physical pursuits. There's something, it's not just the noise you make that is a pleasure, it's the tactile experience of making that noise. So if you encountered a student who had pain, or you thought might be in danger of developing a problem, how yeah. would you approach it? Um, I, I would do what my teacher did with me when I first went to the college, Charles Ramirez, bless him. He took me right back down to basics to try and understand what was going on. OK, so I'd like to talk about your experiences with RSI. Mm -hmm. So you had back pains. Yeah, I had quite bad back problems, actually, which, which is connected with my guitar playing, um, connected with spending many, many hours, years, sitting like this with one leg raised up in an unnatural position. Mm. The only good thing is that you, you learn to have a, a nice straight back. If you're playing well, you need to be a little bit distant from the guitar. So that's good, and you kind of become aware of certain things. But... That, that isn't good. Sitting like that isn't good. And helping people lug equipment around isn't particularly good for your back either. I have a tendency to have a very stiff upper back, which I'm constantly working on. Mm. And upper back stiffness and lack of movement there can also often result in, in pain in the lower back. Quite severe pain, and I've been laid flat for weeks on end in years gone by. Mm. But I found a guy that, that, um, that, that, that understands the problem and has given me stretches, and I see him regularly. Uh, and standing up to play has absolutely turned that around. Mm. It's not only taught me um, how to move my body and to understand my back better, it's given me the freedom to communicate and be heard and seen mm. by an audience, which is fairly important when you're a concert guitarist. Yes, people have paid to see you, I should imagine. Yes. So how long, was, how long were you struggling with pain? Did it start off as a little niggle that you ignored? I had back trouble when I was at college, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it started in my second year at, at music college, the back right. pain. Um, but it was often related to... to I, I enjoy sport. I'm not very talented at sport, but I do like a game of tennis and a game of cricket and a game of golf. And, right, you know, so it was not clear cycling. what the cause was? No, I, I, I think the cause was probably carrying heavy stuff caused it but it's exacerbated by this unnatural way that because you twist slightly as well yeah and what, one, one solution is to bring the guitar in as close as you can you look at a lot of you know people like segovia and bream williams they bream's an exception actually because he's got crazy technique but he's still the greatest but they tend to bring the 12th fret in towards the sternum mm -hmm. quite a lot more than other players the, the really great players the audio diaz those kind of people that can really get around the place so having the guitar here is good. But it's, there's still nothing natural about it. No. Stand up. Join the human race. <laughs> Get out there. Walk around like a human. <laughs> Guitarist erectus, that's what you want to be. Yeah, chairs are quite a new invention. They are. I don't understand. I think, I think I'm the only one playing concerts on... Uh, um, playing this kind of repertoire standing up. 
Have you received any feedback about this or criticism? No, it's weird actually. It's really strange. No one seems to have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm, I, I do exist in, in, a, in a bit of a bubble. I don't. I, I'm not part of the classical mainstream at all. I'm not part of the right. guitar fraternity. I'm very much outside of that, and I'm quite glad to be outside. They probably that, never let you in with standing up. They now. wouldn't know. <laughs> no. I mean, look at my signature model guitar. That doesn't made, look right. It's made by Gary Hearn. I mean, they, 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 people were up in arms about this. And I, <laughs> I did actually say to Gary at one point, he should have some stickers made yeah, with a sound black board. sticker on it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it sounds beautiful. Beautiful thing. No, I think, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not, I'm not a conventional player. What was the question? I've forgotten. Something about <laughs> playing guitar. <laughs> when you had, when you were suffering from back pain, was it during your playing? Um, no, I, I, I think like a lot of musicians, I, I mean, do, do you mean when I was actually playing? Yes. Um, you kind of switch off pain when you're playing. This is probably right. a very, very interesting um, thing to dwell on, actually, because when you go on stage and play, nothing matters. I mean, well, when you're on stage, you've got a totally different level oh, yeah, of awareness. Yes, yeah. but then you know, you get your you get your call. You wait at the side of the stage. You walk on, and that's it. If you've got any aches and pains, you're feeling under the weather. You're feeling tired. That just goes, mm -hmm. and quite possibly that's that's dangerous. Because you can do things that... Depending on how much time you're performing, of course. Yes, yeah. Well, you know, for two lots of 50 minutes, which is my normal mm. kind of length gig, you're, you're going to burn a few calories and do some big physical stuff. Yeah. So you, you can damage yourself. And th th there's a danger time after you finish playing as well, where you, when you're, you're very, very warmed up and you're very stretchy and, and loose. Uh, that's not the time to pick up an amplifier. That really isn't. I've actually done right. this. Okay. I picked up two PA speakers after a very long concert one time, and and um, on the way home, my arms were sort of going like this, and I'd, I'd strained the muscles in, oh. in in my forearms quite badly, and oh. I couldn't do anything for a long time. So hmm. be really careful. If you've been playing, then there's, there's a danger. You're vulnerable. Hmm. How important do you think it is that instrument teachers understand physiology? Well, so, of course it's important, um, it's extremely important. It, it makes, I'm, I'm only hesitating because it makes me wonder how much I actually understand. <laughs> I've learned so much from, from the guy that sorted my back out in the last five mm. years. Um, and I feel that I'm very much a beginner at standing up. I love standing up and I can feel the change it's made to my body. But how much I actually understand physiology is <laughs> is a question. I'm, I'm reading my Alexander Technique book at the moment, oh, right. Indirect Procedures, fantastic book. Um, musicians never stop learning, um, um, and the physical side of it is is absolutely crucial. Of course, it is. Um, so I, I, I would place tremendous importance on that because you've only got you can glance at someone and in a couple of seconds you can see that they're they're not going to be able to fulfil their potential. Yeah. on the instrument because they're holding it in such a weird way mm. that they've either been shown incorrectly or I think the guitar suffers from this more than any other instrument I really do if you took the guitar away from a classical guitarist without disturbing their posture they would look more strange than any other musician <laughs> yes how open do you think the classical guitar community would be to a new design of the guitar one that's designed to fit the body. You're, you're talking to the wrong man here. I have nothing to do with the classical guitar <laughs> community at all. Well, I, I can't imagine uh, the classical guitar community would take too kindly to it. No. I'd, I'd love to have a go on it when you, when you get your prototype mm. made.